Hi, this is Jennifer from JenniferMaker.com. Welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to show you how to make this easy paper Christmas tree advent calendar. It's got 25 spots to keep treats or inspirations or whatever that you'd like to put in there. You can cut it out by hand or you can use the awesome Cricut Maker, which I love or Cricut Explorer, or any other cutting machine actually. Um, my, the files for this are on my blog, but let me show you a little bit about this awesome tree. So there's 24 drawers that just pull out and you can store things inside just like that. Um, I My file has the little numbers on the ornaments here, but you could decorate them however you want. For the 25th day, you take the top of the tree off and you can put the little, the little thing right in there and I think it's really awesome. It's, and it's actually easier than you might think. Uh, it goes to bed, goes together pretty quickly. It only takes um, maybe an afternoon or an evening and it really isn't difficult. It takes 18 sheets of 12 by 12 scrap of paper cardstock, I should say. The for example, like these holiday themed stacks are perfect for this and this is exactly the one that I used. And I got this for like five bucks and I could make three of these trees out of the, the stack here. So it's really um, an easy project and it isn't expensive at all and it is just so much fun. I cannot wait to fill this up um, and we're all going to get something from it. I'm going to make sure there's something for all of us in here and I think it's really, really cool. So I want to show you how to make this. It's not difficult but let me show you my tutorial. All right, so you're going to want some tacky glue and some masking tape. This is all that I use to put together this project. And of course, you want to cut out everything as well. Here I have um, my supports and my octagons and all my boxes and my treetop. So let's start with the support. We're going to want to fold each of the eight supports in half. Now, if you score them or use the perforated lines, it's going to be easier, but you still might want to go slowly to make sure you get a really good center crease on this. You want each of these slots on either side of the fold to match up. If for any reason they don't match up, then you're gonna to wanna to trim them with scissors to make sure that they're going to be able to slot into the base even, you know, easily. Um, then you need to glue just the edge here with the tacky glue. Make sure you put some glue at the bottom there. And you don't need to put any glue like in the, this, the center of the, the fold or anything, just at the edge. And then you're going to want to fold it down and press it into place and hold it there while the glue dries. Um, it doesn't really take too long. I went through and I glued most of mine simply by doing them and then um, putting something heavy on top of them so that they would stay you know, in place as they dried. It went pretty quickly and easily actually. So go ahead and fold up and glue the remaining seven vertical supports for your Christmas tree. And then once you have all eight, it's time to actually start putting together the structure of your Christmas tree. To do this, you're going to start with one support and the largest octagon and you just slide the support into the octagon, just as, as it's showing it here. And then you'll go around and you'll do each of the each of the supports into this bottom base. Your supports will fall down, they can't stay up yet. But don't worry, they will be able to stay up once we have all of the octagons in place. At this point, it's easiest to, to now put in the second octagon. So that would be the one that's the second largest and it goes into the slot on the, the second slot up from the bottom of the supports. So there's four supports and two octagons. Let's put in the other four supports. Make sure they go in all the way. You might need to wiggle them a little bit to get them in. But because I designed this so that the supports are folded, they're actually stronger than they would be than if they were just a single piece of cardstock. So that does help a lot. Now let's put in the third largest octagon right into the top and slot that into each of the vertical supports. If it comes out, just push it back in. There we go, there's three. 
and now we put in the fourth one. These octagons are actually the bases for our drawers, so, but they also provide the structure of the tree. Make sure everything is in there nice and good. And there we go, there's all four of our octagons and all eight of our vertical supports. Now it's time to put together the drawers. And this here is what one of the large drawers looks like. The, this here is the front. You can tell the because the semicircle is on the front of the drawer. So begin by folding in all of the tabs. There's three tabs on each drawer and then fold up each of the sides of the drawer as well. There are three sides to the drawer. And now you just glue the tabs to the sides and it's really quite easy. I found it easiest to glue the two front tabs before I did the back one um, because I could hold both of those two front tabs at the same time while the glue was setting and that really worked the easiest. I liked pinching them just like this while the glue was drying. It made it go a little quicker. And then once that's set, put some glue on that back tab and pinch it closed make sure that it's in place. And there you go, you have a drawer. It slides right into our Christmas tree. So you've got 23 more drawers to go. You need to do eight large ones, eight medium, and eight small. They all have the same construction, they're just different sizes. And so they all go together exactly the same way. And this is a small drawer. Now on the small drawer, you'll notice after it's put together that it's uh, sloped a little bit in the back of the box. And I did that on purpose. I designed it that way because it gets pretty small on the small drawer and it was difficult for me to put my fingers inside to get out the treat. And so by sloping it in the back like this, it's a little easier access to what's inside and it'll be easier to put things in and take them out as well. All right, and then here are all of the ornament numbers that I cut out onto, an, uh, and I actually used a gold glitter paper, which was not in that stack that I showed you earlier in the video, but you could have certainly have used a piece of paper from the stack. I just decided to use this pretty gold glitter paper that I had because I don't actually have many uses for glitter paper. Now the way that I preferred to put these onto my boxes was to use masking tape instead of glue. That way I could move the numbers around if it turned out I had a gift that fit better in a smaller or larger box and I wanted it to give it on a particular day. So this masking tape will you know, give me that flexibility of moving them around. So I just, I put the masking tape on the back of the ornament so it covered the entire number because I thought that looked better from the front if it was all a sort of off-white color, which is the color of my masking tape, right? And then I just put that right on the front of my box. The added benefit to using something like masking tape is it actually sits up off the box a little bit and gives your tree a little bit more dimension. I like the way that it looked. But you, of course, could decorate the front of these boxes any way you wanted. If you are a scrapbooker, you might find this the perfect surface for some fun embellishment. I am not a scrapbooker. I actually tend to like things really simple and not too fussy. And so I just went with a really simple number on an ornament. So you'll notice that number 25 is left over. So I'm just gonna put this right in there because I want to, you know, but you could certainly glue it to the top of your tree if you wanted. Now let me show you how to actually make the tree top. It's not simple. There are scores in this and you're just going to fold in everywhere where there's a score or a perforated line or if you don't have any of those things you can use the points of the of the shape here to create your folds. But there are eight folds that correspond to the eight sides of our Christmas tree. 
just be gentle about when you're folding them because you know the, the scores are placed close together and um, you know it's easy to accidentally fold the wrong spot. And once you have all of your, your score lines folded, you're gonna to wanna to put glue on the tab. Just make sure that the two points meet at the bottom and it'll be, it'll be fine then. And then when you're ready, you put the tree top right on top of your tree. If it doesn't fit quite right, it may simply be that your supports need to go in a bit to make sure that it's done. And there we go. There is our awesome Christmas tree advent calendar. I am so pleased with how this project turned out and I cannot wait to use it. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to make the Easy Paper Christmas Tree Advent Calendar. Um, this is actually the very beginning of the first day of my 25 days of maker projects on the jennifermaker.com blog. So beginning tomorrow, December 1st, I will be giving 25 projects away on my blog as my gift to you for your your support throughout the last year that my blog has been online. I am so grateful for your enthusiasm and feedback and just generally being so wonderful and welcoming to me. So one of the, one of the very first projects, perhaps not day one, we will see their surprises, right? Is this, I wanna give you a little preview here. So this is the Maker Heart Cottage. So it is a paper village in the same general size as the um, popular other popular holiday villages so that would go great with any collections that you currently have there's lots of details on the roof here we have little crafting tools because this is a crafting cottage we have little details on the shutters they're little hearts there's a bay window this is awesome everything is covered in snow this door opens and inside is a crafty lady that you could personalize with your favorite craft um, like she could be holding a knitting a ball of knitting yarn or something like that so oh and of course the roof comes off so that you can turn the batteries on your tea lights on or off and they're they're attached in there with just a card so that you can pull them in and out really easily and so this is one of the projects one of the 25 projects that will be on my blog um, during my 25 days of maker projects Thank you so much for watching my video. Please don't forget to like this video if you indeed liked it and subscribe to my channel. And please stay tuned for more tutorials and projects and just generally awesome things.